café anyway <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast It's FFF episode 2631 2631 Mike Matthews at Cafe Anyway Somewhere in Podcastro Valley Mike's Daily Podcast If you are listening to this on June 27th Wow, they crammed everything in To this day It's all crammed up, my friend Because it's got all kinds of things On this particular day It may just seem to you like a Tuesday But look at this, it's National Sunglasses Day Which I guess makes sense because summer's here Mike's Daily Podcast National Orange Blossom Day I really don't know what that is Mike's Isn't it a drink? Daily Oh, it's the Orange Blossom Special Podcast There's that song that goes Yeah It goes on forever It's a bluegrass song It goes on And oh, the fiddle makes that sound like it's a train whistle. And it goes on and on and it builds, it builds. All of a sudden it goes into that chorus. And they they play super fast. It's amazing. It's also National Ice Cream Cake Day, which that really defeats the purpose of ice cream. You want to separate those two, don't you? Have ice cream with your cake but you mash it all together what happens is it melts and it turns into ice cream soup cake day good luck enjoying that national onion day yes it's also national onion day remember wasn't it onion rings day last week we discussed the perils of onion rings you take a bite that stringy thing comes out it's hot and it hits your face it burns your tongue it's like ow well Disregard all that Because now it's just the onion itself The troublemaker itself Onions Onions make you cry It's true You chop away And you're crying And I know there's like A million things You you can do To prevent that You can chop Onions underwater You can put a Lit match No wait Lit match But it's been put out And here's today's Podcast picture You can Put that in your teeth you can bite onto one as you're somehow that diffuses the smell. Or you do what my lovely lady friend does and you throw them in a blender. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A food processor. And that works too. And there's a picture of my lovely lady friend and I over there. I think it is called Park Ukraine, Ukraina. And yes, very fitting in today's news what's going on and all that. It is uh, Ukraina, California Historical Park is what it is. Ukraina. And the park is actually called Park Ukraina. And I was there with the late great Basil the Boxer about five, five or six years ago. But my lovely lady friend and I went there just a few weeks ago. And it was founded by somebody who came from the Ukraine. Sorry, I say it that way. The Ukraine. And came over and had a huge plot of land and grew stuff, vegetables and fruits. And did some kind of newspaper as well. That was like one of the first Russian language newspapers in America. Something to that effect. So see that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. It was a beautiful day. And it was quite chilly. So we're dressed all warm. But... This weekend, it's going to be warm. It's going to be hotter. And finally, it's International Pineapple Day. Yes, pineapples. Have you ever done... Cut the pineapple all yourself? Or do you just go to the frozen fruit section, grab yourself a bag of chopped, pre-chopped pineapples? Or do you get them in the can? That's crazy. But yes, there it, it is a little bit time consuming to chop a I don't know the proper way of doing it. But pineapples, what a beautiful type fruit that is. Hey, you might be going, Mike, what what happened today? Anything happened today? Oh bunch of stuff happened today. That guy that led that revolt in Moscow with the, the Wagners, the Wagner group. Wagner. 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 
Is it supposed to be because of the, the music? Da, 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 when they stormed Moscow. That guy, that leader guy who used to be a chef. Used to, he's Mr. Logistics. Apparently he's done all kinds of things. Like set up the, the invasion of Syria. And he's kind of this mastermind. Well, he looks a lot like my grandfather on my dad's side. Yeah, he looked like that. So when I saw him on TV, and he's been gone for, gosh, f- at least f- 50 years. He has been gone from this planet. I was like, oh my gosh, is that my grandfather? So maybe I got a little Russian in me. Who knows? It's interesting what we find in this life. Things that pop up at us. So Pat J- Sajak is calling it quits. He's going to retire. Even though that show is basically a game show about retirement. Or it is every retired person watches that religiously. No, I know this for a fact. Because, you know, I was talking to David Foster. And the guy that was interviewing him used to be the head of Sprint, I think it was. And both of them are basically retired. And they were talking about how they love watching. They got, they got religiously watch Wheel of Fortune. So good for them. I know my mom used to love Wheel of Fortune. But he'd been doing it for over 40 years. So I don't know if Vanna's retiring. Had we gotten that nailed down? But Heinz is releasing six new sauce flavorings. There was Heinz 57 sauce. That was supposed to be really good. But they got new sauce flavors, including Hatch Chili Ranch and Yuzu Wasabi. Wow. Am I waiting in line to get those? Yeah. And Burger King is trying to make a comeback. They have launched new fiery nuggets. And they have a new Fanta frozen drink. What I used to love to do in Germany, I discovered this. As we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Anyway. In Germany, when I was a kid, I went with my mom showing me around. Hey, everybody, this is my son. I got to meet all my German relatives. And I noticed that they drink, they mix Fanta and uh, Coke. I guess Coke makes Fanta. And they mix the two together. And I loved it. It was so refreshing. And I would do it. I would mix the two together when I got back home to America. And it would remind me of my wonderful trip to Germany. The Fascinating Material Project. FM Project. So I also, I know we were talking a little bit about Netflix the past couple of days. This fall, apparently, they're going to live stream their first sporting event. A celebrity golf tournament featuring professional golfers and Formula One drivers. Set in Las Vegas, it would feature celebrities from Drive to Survive, a docuseries about Formula One auto racing. Speaking of which, Fast and Furious. I never realized. (laughs) I, I don't think I've ever watched an entire movie. But... It's very interesting to me because they if you watch the early movies, it's very much grounded in reality. I mean, compared to what it is now, I guess is what I'm saying. That's a true statement, isn't it? I try and throw as many true statements. You will travel into the incredible universe. Because I'm outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Look at all the birds. They're real birds right in front of me and flying around. It's a, it's a bird sanctuary here at Cafe Anyway. So, but what I try to tell you is as much truth as I can, aside from the fact that there are no birds in front of me. But what I am trying to tell you is Universal makes the Fast and Furious franchise, or the FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
the Marvel Universe, the Star Wars Universe, the DC Universe. They don't have anything like that. So they, but they do have some of the DC people from like, uh, you got Wonder Woman, the actress that plays Wonder Woman is in the Fast and Furious franchise. You've got The Rock, who's now Black Adam. He's in the Fast and Furious franchise. So they've decided, hey, we'll make Vin Diesel. And Vin Diesel is the voice of Groot, right? So technically he is in the Marvel Universe already. But Vin is like flying through the air in his car and blowing up people, blowing up bridges and flying. Yeah, it's just so fantastical. And that they think is because Universal has no other way. It doesn't really have superheroes any superhero franchise So they've made Vin Diesel a superhero There you go So if you are like Mike Mike these shows These these movies are too impossible I can't get through it because it's like uh, It's CGI It's just a CGI avalanche I can't deal with that Well this is why So Netflix is also doing A full swing Which is professional golf Professional golfers Apple, Google, and Amazon Have started paying For major sports rights packages From football to baseball And Netflix's Formula One Drive to Survive series Helped the Global Racing League Gain broad notoriety It debuted in 2019 If you didn't know The planned golf tournament Would offer a way To sample live sports programming Without paying For one of the major league packages Which can get costly Netflix's bid For the live streaming rights To Formula One last year They uh, put in a bid for that But ESPN ultimately won A three year deal Outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcast Valley Look who's here it's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? Happy Pineapple Day. Has the disgruntled field player tell you what? What? Is my horse Nelly there, Mike? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Nelly's such a wonderful... Does he like uh, pineapple? Does she like... I don't know what gender. Yeah, well, you know, Nelly likes what Nelly likes. So that's all I gotta say about that. Tell you what. What? Basically, it. Yeah. You know, I wanted to pass this information along to you. Um, actually, maybe I should wait to pass this along to the next person that's here right now, pouring me a wonderful root beer. Oh my God, I'm making delicious root beer. Have some right now. Oh boy, I'm the brewmaster. Oh boy. Wow. Okay, I'll drink some of it right now. Mmm. That's good. That's got a little pineapple in it. Drink it right now, can't you? Oh Thank you so much You know Brewmaster I got this from Bassmaster (laughs) And apparently in Birmingham, Alabama Things really are bigger in Texas Why is this Uh, That confusing Uh, That includes the bass Coming out of O.H. Ivy Lake Which claims the coveted spot Atop the 2023 Bassmaster Magazine 100 Best Bass Lake Standings For the first time in history The reservoir has stolen The spotlight over the last three years Producing an eye-popping 15 legacy class Share Lunker Bass A designation for fish Weighing weighing more than 13 pounds 15 of them Between January and March Like the water anglers love The rankings of America's best Bass fisheries can surge or ebb And this one year's 100 best Bass lakes list is a true reflection Of those fluctuations Oh I guess this they're based In Birmingham Alabama the magazine Bassmaster So There you go that's that's the winner Is in Texas And I probably butchered that name O.H. Ivy Lake In Texas and whether, one other bit of information That interesting truthiness That I got here Came from Somebody who said that Board game cafes are popping up All across the nation It's hard to find a brewery Without a stack of games in the corner And Americans are even collecting Classic games from their childhood 
like never before. Interesting. This is a thing according to digitalthirdcoast.net. The board game market, it says, as something is playing in my ear that's very annoying, and I'm turning it off, but you don't hear it, so why am I pointing that out? That's a no-no. Even though podcasters probably don't even talk into their microphones or more concerned with the camera and they don't want to, they just want to look good for the camera. And I had a conversation today with someone in their 20s who went through the radio school at San Francisco State. And even the teacher of one of his classes said, you know what? You guys wanting to do radio and all, you, you, you set up cameras and you want to broadcast live on your Facebook stream or YouTube stream or whatever, you know what? You're no longer in radio. Now you're in TV. So if you want to be a radio person, you got to ditch the camera and just focus on the audio. I thought that was great. The teacher, I go, that's an awesome class. Whoever taught that class, they're right on. So the board game market is booming. And experts say that growth is expected to continue over the next few years. A new nationwide survey finds that more than three in four Americans play board games regularly. 62% say that board games help reduce anxiety. Over half of people say that while some games stand the test of time, Americans say others are due for an update. America's favorite classic games, Monopoly, That's number one on the list. Number two is Connect Four. Number three, Candyland. Number four, Uno. And number five is Battleship. But number one is Monopoly. Nearly three in four prefer classic board games over newer card board games. And the average amount Americans are willing to spend on an exact replica of their favorite game from childhood is... 40 bucks, basically. One in three say they consider playing board games to be a hobby of theirs. That number jumps to nearly 40% for millennials. Yes, millennials. They're, they're more into board games than my generation. Wow, nearly 40%. No wonder businesses are trying to cash in on the nostalgia of America's favorites. Fascinating there. Thank you, Digital Third Coast, for that information and if you would like to chime in about that interesting truth or fact or possible fact i don't know i haven't verified it but it sounds pretty truthy to me you can call me 510-228-4640 that's 510-228-4640 and with more ways to reach me it's ariel makes tv podcast is written and produced and performed by mike matthews his podcast is super easy to find Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.